Now, as I do this video, please keep an eye on the top of the screen. Reason being is, and I can't show them all, I'm going to be posting Bible verses that have been completely removed from the NIV. And so far, I have found that there are over 2,000 verses missing in the NIV. And that's just over 64,000 words missing in that Bible. And countless more verses have been rewritten in the NIV. And so I cannot effectively show all of them in this short video. However, I do have a page on the website located here that I used in a sermon decades ago that caused 100% of the people in the church that day to forever put down their NIV Bibles. That sermon was just over 45 minutes long, and even that was nowhere near as much time as I needed to expose this corrupt Bible. And so I'm not going to be showing all the verses here. I will, however, show three of them that are missing to give you an idea as to why they did this. The first verse is my favorite one to share on the street because it openly proves the Vatican is the one behind rewriting all the Bibles. Everyone I show this to were shocked because they all knew it was a Vatican fingerprint in a big way. If you know your history, you know about Rome's hatred of the Word of God in that they openly declare their hatred for it in writing to the point of declaring it to be a poisoner of souls. Worse yet, for centuries they killed and tortured millions of obedient Christians simply because they had a Bible. Now that we're in a more civilized time, if you can believe that, the popes know that they can't just openly walk into your town and burn you at the stake to scare your neighbors into bowing to the pope in worship. And so they decided rather to unchain the Bible from their pulpits and offer the people their edited version to try and hide the truth about their extreme anti-Christian ways. If you have an NIV, notice this in Acts chapter 8, verses 36 to 38. It says in the NIV, As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. Did you notice verse 37 is missing? In the original NIV that was published in 1978, both the number and the verse is missing. Later, due to numerous complaints from Christians, they placed the number back in, but not the verse. They opted rather to just post a footnote at the bottom of the page in very small print suggesting that some manuscripts included the verse. But the truth was, all manuscripts included that verse. And so they lied and worded it in such a way so as to make many assume it was not needed since other Bibles took it out, when in fact they never did. Now notice the King James Bible that is especially hated by Rome because not only are all the verses still intact, exposing them for who they are, the original preface of the 1611 KJV Bible, which I have posted on my website right here, openly exposes the popes of Rome as being antichrist and quite evil. Check it out. This is what it says in the King James Bible in Acts chapter 8, verses 36 to 38. And as they went on their way, they came onto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And then verse 37 says, And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. The reason verse 37 is missing in the NIV is because the Roman Catholic Church baptizes babies in the exact same way the pagans of old did. And since a baby cannot publicly proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord so as to confirm to the one baptizing him that they have repented of their sins and have chosen to walk with Jesus in life and therefore are worthy to be baptized, the Vatican chose to remove that verse to keep their pagan dogma intact and well hidden from prying eyes. Now notice the next verse. 2 Timothy 3.17 in the NIV says, So that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. If you read in context, it's talking about how having the Bible and reading it and studying will thoroughly equip you. So that sounds all well and good, doesn't it? But there's something missing here. That if known, will further move the child of God to strive harder in their walk with the Lord so as to gain the perfection in Christ promised unto them if they're obedient. Notice the same verse in the King James Bible, 2 Timothy 3.17, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Yes, as the NIV stated, if read in context, the man of God can be thoroughly equipped if they read and trust the word of God, but they purposely leave out the word perfect here, because in so doing makes some Christians believe 
they can never attain to perfection this side of eternity, even though the Bible says otherwise in many verses. Notice what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. He says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. To remove the word perfect in 2 Timothy 3.17 is to either declare the Bible contradicts itself, or worse yet, it declares Jesus Christ is lying about perfection. The many wolves on the pulpits today claim that perfection only comes after we gain and then stand in heaven. Well, if that's true, then why was Genesis 17.1 written? that says, and when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. That was declared to him before Abram even became Abraham. And because of his perfect walk, he was blessed with that perfection and his name was changed. And just so you know, if you search for the word perfect in the NIV, it only comes up 42 times. But that same word appears 94 times in the King James Bible. Now notice this. Proverbs 21, 21 in the NIV says, Whoever pursues righteousness and love finds life, prosperity, and honor. But the King James Bible says, He that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness, and honor. The NIV removed the word righteousness here for the same reason they removed perfect in 52 other verses, because removing it prevents the Bible student from ever knowing he or she can actually attain to righteousness in Christ. Worse yet, they replace the word righteousness with prosperity in this verse so as to cultivate money worship. And so you now see why all the prosperity preachers prefer the NIV when they make merchandise of their people. It lends credence to their so-called prosperity gospel. And so again, I only shared three verses out of the thousands missing in the NIV, and I only shared a dozen or so on the screen up above. And if you check out which verses are missing in the NIV, you'll see why so many people today believe in a secret rapture, a seven-year tribulation, infant baptism, eternal life in hell, Sunday Sabbath, and a host of other doctrines of demons and traditions of man. Thank you for watching. God bless.